Jim, thanks for coming to Rhode Island and visiting with the creditors of the Cooperative Credit Association. They really appreciated the dialogue with you. Uh, you started in September. You've had some opportunity to get your feet under with under you. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the things that you've seen in the early months and, and you know, traveling around the country from credit and some of the common themes you're hearing and, and where you're going? Sure. Well, first, Paul, thanks for the invitation to come up. It was, it was, a, it was a great opportunity just to kind of listen to, you know, our members and, and find out what they're thinking, what's concerning to them, what they're interested in. Uh, one of the most important things, as you know, is we're, we're constantly working at improving our value proposition as an association sure. and uh, to understand if that's connecting with them on a on a day-to-day -day basis uh, in their credit unions is pretty important. Yeah. So I think that was good feedback uh, as well as just trying to engage them in the advocacy process. You, sure. You've done such a great job up here of getting your members in, involved and so it's kind of singing to the choir, I suppose. Sure. But uh, but we can always do a better job, certainly from the National Association, together with you, at uh, in giving them the right tools and information, and then hopefully challenging them to get more involved and uh, uh, be an even more effective voice for our industry. Sure. One of the things I hear, Jim, from a lot of our members is we're going to have a, a new Congress coming in. You know, there's a changeover uh, in the parties. You know, as a former congressman, what do you see outlook-wise? Do you think the Congress will get more productive as we move forward, or are we going to be stalemate status quo? Yeah, I'd love to tell you that, that uh, you know, now that we have a new Congress, it's going to be, you know, all roses and, and uh, chocolates and everything, but it's not. Uh, we've already seen in the first couple of months uh, that, uh, that they're fighting, and that's just among the Republicans themselves. Sure. Uh, that's even before you talk about how the Republicans are fighting with the White House. Look, I think s some of this is just natural and sure. and uh, it's natural for the last two years of a president it doesn't really matter who the president is who right. the congress is but there's a natural moment in time here where it's kind of challenging so it may take a new president a new agenda a new congress uh, yet again in order to to refresh that uh, and to kind of get that momentum going again because a lot of these guys as we talked they don't know how a bill becomes a law. Some sure. of them have never have never gotten a bill passed right. or, or never passed a budget or never worked in a committee. And so some of the things that, you know, I know from your experience and my experience, you know, we think is kind of second nature to anybody that's a legislator, they don't know how to do. Sure. And so I think getting that muscle memory back is going to be important. And right. we've got to be there um, at those key moments to inject our agenda, what's important to credit unions, sure. and uh, what's important to the members that they obviously sure. serve. Right. One of the most interesting <clears throat> things you said today, I mean, you heard it in the room, the frustration on the regulatory side, right? We have our challenges with the NCUA, with the CFPB, and others. Um, you know, you mentioned in the comment letters for risk-based capital, we had 2,000, which was a great number. But if you just took the number of credit employees, credit volunteers, all the people that credit unions touch, we could generate lots more letters than that. So how do you think we, have, we can work to get more people engaged in these processes? Well, you, you know this. I mean, it's a, it's a numbers game right now. Just, in, just engaging, if we engaged all of our credit union CEOs across the country, that's a little over 5,000. If you add the volunteers, the board members, you know, you're over 40,000, 50,000. If you add the people who are working in credit unions, you're over 350,000. Sure. And that's even before you talk about a million, 100 million, you know, membership voices right. all, all pulling in the same direction. I just think we've got to do a better job and it's and it's a partnership that you and I certainly can bring to this in making sure they have the right information knowing when to engage part of it is you know the they're so busy. I mean, sure. we're talking to the, some of the busiest people uh, in our in our industry, and we're asking them to engage, that's right. and that's tough. Sure. So you've Absolutely. got to pick your battles. You've yeah. got to pick your priorities. Right. You've got to give them the tools in the toolbox so they know exactly when to go and which tool to pick up and which one to use. Um, and then you got to then you got to launch. Then you sure. got to and and you got to make it important. Uh, you have to make it a um, and you've you've encouraged me on this particularly on risk-based capital you folks up here uh, with uh, with the co-op association has done so such a good job you were at the tip of the spear on risk base one you are again on risk base two uh, and I hope your folks not only recognize that leadership that you provided but also continue to engage the way they did on RBC one because right. it really made the difference absolutely. really made the difference absolutely absolutely well Jim we appreciate having you here I think the CUNA League partnership has never been stronger, and it's great for our credients to see you here in the field. Uh, we're constantly talking about CUNA and all the great things going on in D.C. So tying that together back here on the local level is great, so we really appreciate it. Thank you. Likewise. Thank I enjoy you. working with you. Great, Jim. Thank Thanks. you.